Translating words into symbols. Level 2. Alright, we're going to work on various examples. It is very important that you understand how to translate phrases into variable expressions. This is the first step in solving more complicated word problems that you will encounter in your studies of algebra and other related science classes, such as physics and chemistry. Alright, let's try the following examples. Translate each phrase into a variable expression. Our first phrase is 10 more than a number. This phrase is describing an addition between two numbers because of the key word more. So this phrase translates to 10 plus n or n plus 10. Either form represents the same translation of the phrase. Let's try this one. 5 times a number. This phrase is describing a product because of the key word times. This phrase translates to 5 times n or 5n. Let's try the next one. A number decreased by 11. This phrase represents a subtraction between two numbers because of the key word decreased. So this phrase translates to n minus 11. Many students have a hard time with phrases that involve subtraction because they are not sure which numbers are being subtracted from each other. For example, the variable expression 11 minus n is read 11 decreased by a number. These two expressions are completely different because for the most part, they yield different results when you substitute the variable n with a random number. So be extra careful when translating phrases involving subtraction. Make sure you are subtracting the numbers in the correct order. Alright, let's try the next one. The difference between a number and 2. Once again, we have a subtraction because of the key word difference. So this phrase translates to n minus 2. Alright, let's go to the next phrase. The quotient of 15 and d. Here we have a division because of the key word quotient. This quotient involves the numbers 15 and the variable d. So the phrase translates to 15 divided by d or 15 over d. Both answers are acceptable, but once again, we usually want the answer with the fraction bar. Let's try a slightly more complicated one. 6 more than twice y. This phrase has two key words, more, which means addition, and twice, which means multiplication. So it's 6 more than 2y, or 2y plus 6. Notice that when we are dealing with addition, the order in which the numbers are added is not important. A word of caution, this is not the case for subtraction. So be careful with phrases involving the subtraction operator. The order in which the numbers are being subtracted matters. Let's try the next example. 10 times the sum of a number and 8. Here we have a multiplication because of the word times. And we have an addition because of the word sum. Also, notice that the product involves the number 10 and the sum of a number and 8. We are going to need grouping symbols for this one. So the phrase translates to 10 times the quantity n plus 8. Whenever you have multiplication, it's always between two numbers. In this case, one number is 10 and the other was the sum of a number and 8. So we need to use grouping symbols to group the expression form by the sum, which is then multiplied by 10. Alright, let's try the next one. The difference between 3 times a number and 1. So here we have a subtraction because of the keyword difference. The two expressions that are being subtracted are 3n and 1. So the final answer is 3n minus 1. Let's try the following phrase. Twice a number increased by 3. Here we have a sum because of the keyword increase. So this phrase translates to 2n plus 3, or 3 plus 2n. Whenever you have phrases such as twice, tripled, half, a third, these phrases denote a multiplication. Alright, so now let's go over examples that involve translating phrases that are slightly more practical. Answer the following with a variable expression. Bob is 2 feet taller than Joe. If Joe's height is J feet, how tall is Bob? It's important to read the question as many times as it takes you to understand it completely. The question is describing the heights of Bob and Joe. The question is asking how tall Bob is given the fact that Bob is 2 feet taller than Joe. We are also told that Joe's height is represented by the variable J. So Bob's height is equal to Joe's height plus 2, or written algebraically J plus 2 feet. And this is our final answer. Let's try the next one. Maria is 10 inches shorter than Claudia. If Claudia's height is C inches, how tall is Maria? Once again, reread the problem over and over until you understand it. The question is asking how tall Maria is given the fact that Maria is 10 inches shorter than Claudia, 
whose height is represented by the variable c. So since Maria is 10 inches shorter than Claudia, we take Claudia's height c and subtract 10 from that. This results in a final expression c minus 10 inches, which represents Maria's height. Let's try a slightly more challenging one. Sam is 3 feet taller than Dan. If Dan's height is d feet, how tall is Sam? Also, if Sam's height is s feet, how tall is Dan? Let's answer the first question. We know that Sam is taller than Dan by 3 feet. We also know that Dan's height is d feet. So to find Sam's height, we take Dan's height and add 3. This results in a final expression of d plus 3 feet. Notice that this expression is from the reference point of Sam. Imagine that you are Sam and you glance at Dan. You see that you are taller than Dan. So this expression makes sense. The second question tells us that Sam's height is s feet and is asking us how tall is Dan. So if you were Dan and look at Sam, you would notice that you were shorter than Sam. So your height will be equal to Sam's height minus 3. This results in a final expression of s minus 3 feet. The first variable expression we obtain is from the reference point of Sam, and the second variable expression is from the reference point of Dan. Both contain the same constraint, the fact that Sam is 3 feet taller than Dan. The variable expressions are different depending on whose point of view we focus on. At times, it's useful to put yourself on the character's shoes and think about their perspective relative to the other. Alright, let's work on questions that require the use of formulas. Answer the following with a variable expression. Matthew drove for h plus 6 hours at a constant rate of r plus 5 miles per hour. How far did he go? This problem is a typical distance equals rate times time problem. So we use the distance traveled formula at a constant rate, d equals rt. In this problem, the rate is equal to the quantity r plus 5. So we use grouping symbols and substitute this expression for r on our formula. And in the same manner, the time interval traveled is equal to the quantity h plus 6. So we substitute this expression using grouping symbols for the variable t. Our final variable expression is equal to the quantity r plus 5 times the quantity h plus 6 miles. Alright, let's try the next one. Pencils cost w cents each and notebooks cost n cents each. How much will three pencils and two notebooks cost? This problem is an application of the cost formula, c equals n times p. But first notice that we have two distinct items, in this case, pencils and notebooks. So to find the total cost, we need to add the total cost of the pencils and the total cost of the notebooks. The total cost of the pencils is equal to 3w, and the total cost of the notebooks is equal to 2n. So the total cost is equal to 3w plus 2n cents. This expression represents the total cost of three pencils and two notebooks. Notice that the formula we used was a slightly modified version of the cost formula because of the fact that we had two different types of items, in this case, pencils and notebooks. Make sure that you understand the problem before you blindly use a formula. All right, let's work on the final example. A rectangle has a length 5r yards and width of 2s yards. What is the perimeter and the area of the rectangle? To find the perimeter of the rectangle, we use the formula p equals 2l plus 2w, or just add all the sides of the rectangle. So using the formula and simplifying the expression, we have that the perimeter is equal to 10r plus 4s. In the same manner, the area of the rectangle can be found by using the formula length times width. So substituting the expressions into the formula and simplifying, we have that the final variable expression for the area of the rectangle is equal to 10 times r times s, or 10rs squared yards. And that's our final answer. All right. It's important that you develop this important skill of translating phrases into variable expressions and start thinking algebraically by working solely with variable expressions as opposed to numerical expressions. Okay, in our next video we will expand on this skill of translating phrases into variable expressions by taking sentences and translating them into equations.